Hi, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is how we interpret data that's in tables. So if you haven't already, make sure you've had a look at the two previous lessons on this similar topic, which is on variables and on how to put data into tables. Today we're looking at what those tables show and how to interpret that data and how to use it. Okay, it um, works along with the worksheet, which is in the comments at the bottom or attached to the lesson today. So make sure you follow along with the worksheet, pause the video and we'll get to each task. If this video is helpful, give it a like so that I know that this kind of thing will help you out. So today we're looking at how to interpret data in tables. So here we've got um, Leanne has four rods, each made from a different metal. She wanted to find out which metal was the best conductor of heat. The diagram shows some of Leanne's equipment. So we've got brass, copper, lead and iron rods and we've got the time it takes for the metal ball to drop off. And you can see the metal balls are stuck on with wax and the rods are in hot water. So what will happen is the rods will heat up, the wax will melt, the ball will drop off. So we've got the brass took 36 seconds to drop off, copper took 24 seconds to drop off, lead took 246 seconds to drop off and the iron took 132 seconds. So which ball was the best conductor of heat? So is that going to be the one with the longest time or the one with the shortest time? So let's think through the investigation again. So the metal rods are going to get hot, the wax is going to melt, the ball's going to drop off. If it's the best conductor, is that going to be a short time it takes for the wax to melt or is it going to be a long time? We're looking for a short time. So which? let's have a look at the table. Which one's got the shortest time? So the shortest time is 24 seconds, so copper would be the best conductor. Okay, so task two, again, this is on the worksheet. So here's a set of data. We don't know much about this data, but we need to state three things that we can interpret about this data, any three things. So we've got years along the left-hand side. We've got number of medically confirmed cases of measles. So what can we say from this data? The first thing I can say, which year had the most confirmed cases? So the most cases was in the year 2012. Obviously you're going to write in much more uh, clear sentences than I am. Um, if we can say the most, we can also say the least, can't we? And our least cases was in 2015. So can we see a general trend between 2012 to 2015? So our general trend is between 2012 to 2015, the number of cases Make sure you write those answers out in great sentences. So task three, so a student needs a new power source. Figure two shows three different power sources. The table below gives information about the different power sources. The student chooses the large power source. They choose the large one, this one here. Uh, why did they choose the large power source? So let's have a little look. The data's there for a reason, we need to use it. So first of all, our compact power source only needs one charge and, and its mass is 100 grams. Our large one gets five charges, but its mass is 200 grams. Whereas our high capacity one has 10 charges, but it's 600 grams. So why would they pick the large one? Okay, so we could say the large one is in between, isn't it? It's got, um, it's twice as heavy, but compared to the high capacity, it's a third as light. So compared to our high capacity, it's a third lighter. Okay, what about the number of charges? So it's got how many more times charge does the large one have to the compact one? It's five times more charge. and it's got half as much charge as the high capacity. So we've used a lot of the data to prove why the large one would be better. It's got half as much capacity as the large, um, the high capacity one, but it's got five times more than the um, compact one, so that's much better. It's a third lighter than the large, uh, the high capacity one, the larger third lighter, but it's twice as heavy, right? Which means that it's it, for its height, uh, for its uh, mass to charge ratio, it's a better combination. And our final task, methane, petrol, and coal and fuels. So this task is also on the worksheet, so make sure you're writing those answers out in full sentences. Methane, petrol, coal, and fuels uh, are all fuels. Table two shows some information, evaluate the use of the fuels. So we need to say what's good and what's bad about each fuel. So let's have a little look. Which fuel, we've got fuels down the left, we've got their state, gas, liquid and solid, we've got their energy 
um, and we've got their mass of carbon dioxide produced. Is carbon dioxide a good thing or a bad thing? Yet, yeah, it's not a good thing. It causes global warming, doesn't it? So, energy, good thing we want high energy or low energy? We want high energy, don't we? So, which one's got the highest energy? So, the one that's got the highest energy is methane. So, we can say methane energy per gram. Now, I'm just getting that information straight from the top of the um, table. Whereas, which one's got the least? Coal has... Let's look at the other side, okay? So the other side is the mass of carbon dioxide produced per one kilojoule of energy release. So which one's got the highest? Which one's got the lowest again? So the highest is our coal. So coal, well, I can just copy it from the top, in milligrams of carbon dioxide produced and which one has got the lowest? Lowest is our methane. Mass, and then I can carry that on. Mass in milligrams of carbon dioxide produced for one kilojoule of energy released. So let's make an overall statement here. Which one do you think is the best? The one that's got the highest energy and the lowest carbon dioxide. So overall, which fuels the best? Highest energy, lowest carbon dioxide, methane. Okay, which one's the worst? Coal, because it's got the lowest energy and the highest carbon dioxide produced. So from that table, we can interpret it, we can write down a series of statements based on using that data at the top of the table as our sentence starters, saying which one's got the highest, which one's got the least, and then making an overall um, sentence. I don't think I would have been able to make the overall sentence without doing those building blocks to start with. Okay, so there's four tasks for you to have a go at. They're all on the worksheets that is in the comments or attached to your lesson. If this video has been helpful, give it a like. Um, well done, and hope you visit some more of the videos. Thanks.